Hey there everyone, Atesh here, back again with another video and welcome to this very special video where I want to cover a lot of updates. Yes, you heard it right, things are moving a lot and who is going to give you updates about what things are moving, where they are moving, of course this channel. So here I am talking about all the updates that are moving that you should keep an eye on. They are really interesting and some of them might be very useful for you. So this one is not the that hands-on coding or a crash course. By the way, I did a recently a crash course on the Redux Toolkit. If you haven't checked it out, do check it out. It's all pure hands-on, an amazing code tutorial as well. So by the way, uh, there are actually three updates that I want to give you and out of all these, I can definitely make a separate video on each one of them, discuss my thoughts, but I thought let's sum them up and have a pure discussion, just an informal raw video of how things are moving, what I do, I, what do I think about them, and what's your thought? That's all, that is also really important, so let me know in the comments section. The first update is from the Google, and no, Google didn't shut down any more services, uh, hopefully for now. Uh, but I do have a video pending that I really want to make about the situation of the Firebase, and why some of the things they are taking away from the Firebase. Is it a good time to move on to some open source? We'll discuss about them in some separate video, but there is a different update that I want to show you. So let me share my screen here and let's have a discussion on this. So this is the new talk of the town that's going on. So this is idx.dev. Uh, this is something groundbreaking and I didn't got yet the access of this uh, as a private beta. Hopefully very soon I will be. I'm in the joining list. Uh, I didn't approach anyone to give me a unfair advantage to get this access uh, but if somebody is watching who works at Google or can give me an access on that I would love to explore this and share my opinion uh, on to this one so if somebody is watching hey I would love to get an access on this one uh, so what is this all about so this is IDX so IDX is a developer experience this is so called known as you can build everything inside a web browser. These days, the war of building everything in the web browser is at its top peak, almost somewhat similar to the database war. Uh, everybody is building up their own things, like there is a code space, uh, a GitHub code space is there. There are so many others, some as from JetBrains, and there are independent players in the market, like Replit is there. Uh, there there's, uh, there's so many of them. Uh, some of them I forgot the name. There is a codespace.io and there is one more. I, I need to search that so probably I can search it here. Uh, so there is one more here. I, I have, How can I forget the name of it? Code Sandbox uh, versus there is another one. Uh, Stack Blitz. Yeah, yeah. Stack Blitz and Code Sandbox. Both of them are there. Everybody is trying to bring users so that they can build everything in the web browser. No setup environment, nothing so that we can build everything on the on the cloud itself within just the browser. I think it's almost there, but the only missing piece is the mobile development. The mobile development is not yet optimized for having an in-browser experience. And I think that's the missing piece. That is the missing piece we are having. I cannot build React Native apps or the Flutter apps and can test them out within the browser. Otherwise, it would be so much easier to teach people for that. So that's where the Google comes in. And what if your developer experience was always uh, boosted with the AI? So yes, they are including their Kodi AI. And they're saying entirely in the cloud, entirely in the browser, I don't have to ask people that, hey, go ahead and buy a laptop which has this GB of RAM, that GB. It's built all, all in, so this is something really like that. And of course, all the cloud features like syncing with the team. No, this is not a sponsored video. I'm just putting out thoughts and what all can be done with this one. So again, not a sponsored video. So what they're saying is they are introducing a project IDX. These days, launching application means navigating an endless sea of complexity, felt the pain at Google, so we started IDX. An experimental new initiative aimed at bringing your entire full stack, multi-platform app to workflow. I am. I'm really a little bit curious that hope they don't push me to build everything using the Flutter. I don't want to do that. It's a great tech. Flutter is great tech. I don't really say that, but don't force me to do that. I, if I want to work in Next.js, Angular, React, just allow me to do all of that. So IDX starts with a web-based workspace that feels familiar for coding, but fresh. And we're just at the beginning of this journey. You are Google. Your beginning phase is much more advanced than anything that anybody can build. Uh, there are a couple of open source versions of that. I'll also talk about that. Probably I can make this video much more useful and fruitful than what you are thinking. So we love your input about the working. So uh, there are a couple of things that you should really know. So definitely you should really know about there's a code sandbox, there is a stack blitz. So in case you have never heard about them, so let me just walk you through with them as well. I'm keeping this video a little bit informal so that more and more information I can pass you. 
and you can be more familiarized with that. So there is a stack blitz as well. Both of them are great. And actually, I do have a paid plan of, <laughs> I have, I've paid money to them because it's easier for me to teach. It's easier for me to do pair programming in this. So uh, I bought it before I went into the job. I was teaching few people pair programming in this one. So yeah, that's when I bought it. I, I don't use it these days because now we don't do pair programming in my new company. Uh, so we do stack blitz as well. This is again pretty powerful. And what you don't know about is one of such platform, which is kind of an open source as well. So if you have heard about this coder.com, uh, it's also kind of a self-hosted remote development platform. Uh, probably, uh, what happened to you guys? <laughs> uh, I boasted about you just. <laughs> okay, uh, probably I can just get you on the GitHub. Uh, that would be better. Uh, yeah, there we go. I think that will load up. Probably something is wrong with their homepage. <laughs> Bad timing. <laughs> but yeah, this is Coder. Uh, this is pretty powerful, amazing environment. So it's a software development environment a via Terraform that you can be on the Linux. So basically what you say is it gives you it gives you all the environment you want to build in React, Node, uh, maybe Python environment, Django, whatever. You can just have everything. So there is a, a code marketplace even. So if you just look at the coder and uh, here you can see all the things like you can just have this kind of environment just up and running on aws and can have your own environment even you can have the snippets of the terraform so that they can give you environment so this is a pretty uh, cool tech where you can have the ides in the browser you can spin up a big machine in the aws google cloud wherever you like and can have this coder sitting on top of it using the terraform we can actually interact with it and can pull up the sample template, just like the GitHub Sandbox, uh, GitHub uh, Code Sandbox does it. Uh, GitHub, we call it as, uh, GitHub, we call it something. How can I forget the name of all of them? But again, uh, Code Spaces, GitHub Code Spaces. So yeah, as I was saying, you can make it sit on the top of any cloud environment and you can have almost like a GitHub Code Spaces environment for you. And you can spin up more because it's a Terraform, so you can code it out and can build more in, uh, kind of a sample templates for Angular, React, Python, Jupyter Notebook, uh, you name it, you can build anything on top of it. So this space is crowded, what I'm saying is. And another entry in this space, by the way, JetBrains is also in this space. Uh, there is also a Git pod that is also in this space. Very crowded space, by the way, very. Replit is also a big player, very crowded space. And this is where they actually say that, hey, we'll be allowing you. If they actually allow me to do this within the idxgoogle.com, that's it. I'm moving on to this one. These days, I'm very aggressive in uh, teaching people mobile app development, and I would do this on YouTube for free <laughs> if this is something that is there. I would love to do this. And uh, I love this. Uh, this is the first time I'm actually officially visiting the website. So React is there, Flutter is there. Hope they don't push me too much into the Flutter, but hey, if they are giving me all these options, hey, this is something serious. Uh, so iOS simulator, Android emulator, I don't have to say to people that in order to develop iOS app, you need an iOS device. No, you can. You just need IDX. Ah, oh, man, this is super, super interesting. Code faster with generative AI. I have noticed a significant improvement in my performance of writing the code and teaching it. Uh, I'm using the GitHub Copilot these days, but the code is actually very common. If anybody is building with the GitHub code space, it's, it's a very common code. It just messes up things sometimes. Okay, so this is what it is. Uh, they have written a good article on it. This is the one that I have read already. So this is something that they mention all these things. App, 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 and all that. It's again the same thing as you see on the website. What's interesting is there is an article on the TechCrunch as well that, hey, there is an AI uh, enabled browser based development environment. Uh, so yes, these days you have to inject AI everywhere to make it noticeable. So they have their Kodi to make it more, uh, here it is, they mentioned the Kodi that, hey, this is more, uh, fancy <laughs> than you're thinking. It's competing with uh, chat GPT and whatnot. But I think this could be a game changer. Uh, you can build a lot of things with this. This is the private preview. I would love to love to check this out and have my thoughts onto this one. Uh, while GitHub Copilot, Amazon Code Whisper and other are similar AI coding features, Google Focus on full stack development puts a slightly different twist on this theme. Uh, with Codespace and AWS Cloud9, GitHub and Amazon also offers cloud-based environment. I told you, this is a this is a crowdy space. This is not the Google's first one. Uh, but I think good, good stuff. We should keep an eye on this one. And that's what makes developers so much special. So many companies are working for us to make our life easier so that we can build awesome projects. Pretty cool, isn't it?
Okay, so that's that's the first update officially. Uh, so that's basically a wrap of the first update that we have. There is another second very minor teeny tiny update. So maybe you're interested in this or not. So I'll still walk you through. So another update that we have is the Redix UI. So Redix UI or the company behind the Redix UI silently realized that, hey, uh, we would also like to compete in the space where the Tailwind is already competing and we would love to get started. So if you click on the get started, uh, you'll see that now here we have, in the Redix, we didn't used to have all these things. So that you see on the left-hand side, these avatars and badges and buttons and calls outs and cards. This was not a feature of Redix UI. This was supposed to come from this library, which is known as Shad CN. Uh, so based on the Redix, they built all their components. So the basic core components were coming up from the Redix. But on top of that, the larger components like cards and uh, buttons, all these were actually being created by this company. So they silently decided that, hey, we'll roll out our own stuff. Although uh, ShadCN is still much more better at this point because they are a little more mature, but I think they are catching up pretty fast. So uh, anything that you need uh, from hover card to pop over, uh, them and just giving you directly all these things, scroll area, you need separators, sliders, <laughs> they're, they're giving you a lot of stuff. Uh, go ahead, play around. Yeah, there's uh, so much fun on this. Uh, so this is uh, like the basic. Now the third update is actually a major one. So in case you noticed, I brought an amazing, amazing engineer on this uh, channel. Uh, we did had a live stream. Some of you have already watched that. Uh, he is none other than our Savo, uh, the guy behind the pieces. And he actually rolled out a new version. He discussed this briefly in the live stream as well, that what we are about to bring, and it's actually here. So I would love to give uh, some shout out to them as well. So uh, if you check out the pieces, uh, so this is their homepage, and you can actually check out about the product updates here. And this is the new update they were talking about. This is pretty serious stuff if you think about it. So it says discover related people, set copilot context, and so much more. What I'm super excited about is this part, set copilot context. So far, whenever we use uh, any copilot, whether that's from Amazon, Whisper, uh, GitHub, uh, they are trained on generalized models. So what people are doing best practices or what the people are writing on the internet. So based on that, things are being trained. Uh, one of the disadvantage of them is everything is coming up from the cloud. So everything that you are writing in your code, that is also going on their server, whether it's a chat GPT server, it's Amazon, Google, wherever that is. And some companies don't allow that because the code is sensitive. Definitely Microsoft is not going to allow you or Adobe is not going to allow you to write the next uh, killer feature in the Firefly of Photoshop using these copilot. It improves the productivity. Everybody agrees on that. But if the proprietary code goes for the training and it comes into the suggestion, that's it. The game is over. So really, that is super, super important. I hope now you understand the gravity of the situation that why setting up the local context is so much important for a lot of companies. And in fact, a lot of people are still not able to use the Copilot's feature because of the suggestion. So in this one, they are actually saying that a dynamic LLM runtime for offline interaction. You don't need to be connected on internet. Nothing is going out there. You can use your own RAMs and GPUs. And you can actually select the folder. I'll show you. They actually mentioned this. Uh, advanced related people's infrastructure. You can set your context menu. By the way, you can just select and add people into the same context so that you can just interact with the team, ma team members. Annotation is something. Uh, you can annotate your entire code that, hey, this code does that. And that later on can be used for searching. And this is, this is my favorite one. Set copilot context. You can literally search for a browser. Uh, you can browse into a folder. And... Uh, just ask question based on your own code base. You don't need to give a KT session, a knowledge transfer session to somebody who's coming in. Uh, you can just ask him that, hey, use pieces. Uh, just this is the folder and ask any question to it. That That's all you have to do. Uh, so this is so much interesting. And I think this is one of the game changer thing that's going to come. Uh, manage copilot context. And this is super useful as well. Let's just say sometimes I'm working in back end, sometimes I'm working in front end. I can set my context just for the back end or just for the front end to ask relative relevant questions about that. That's, that's crazy, man. Uh, change the color of your message bubble. 
how cute that is uh, but that's uh, appreciated uh, again there is so much more that he discussed on that so by the way in case you haven't watched uh, the live stream where we actually nerded out a lot <laughs> me and Savo uh, behind the scene technologies of the pieces how flutter is there rust is there how the custom llm works and what all the magic is done behind the copilot i told you copilot looks like a snippet saving manager but the amount of tech they have introduced already these features are nothing what they are cooking up with the tech so i think in the future also they'll be rocking quite a lot uh, so this is the basics if you need any one video on because i know the google part and the pieces part they can deserve a separate video on its own where i can just jargon out things spit out the information some of which might be useful some of which might not be if you wish uh, to have see that just let me know in the comment section uh, just uh, write out we need video on google or the pieces just write google or pieces i'll collect that and based on the feedback that you give me i'll try to prepare a dedicated video on that but hey quite an interesting update quite a lucky time to be a developer around here uh, so that's all for the update uh, that i wanted to show you around i hope you have enjoyed that and let's catch up in another such fun video